<laughs> Me gusta. Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Minecraft Complete Mono Guide. Today I'll be talking to you about proxies and specifically the two specific proxies that are used in combination to uh, allow texture rendering and other things to work on both the client and server sides. And I'll be talking about how to set this up but also about how although you have this you won't necessarily need it all the time for rendering etc. So first what is a proxy? Well in my there's many definitions but in Minecraft Forge a proxy is a thing that allows the world to be maintained as well as all the rendering and stuff on both the client and server side and the two files that are needed for these proxies are common proxy and client proxy which have some code in them I'm going to explain these in a bit and um, what the client proxy is basically is it renders all the textures and stuff so uh, like an item texture armor textures etc registering entities entity IDs etc and what the common proxy is is that but applying that to the server side so that it works on the client and server side and when we create these files it's good to put them in like a a package within your package so I have my package amcmg5 then I have a package within that called proxies it's good to put your proxies there so that they're not uh, mixed up with the other uh, code so the first thing I'm going to do is create the common proxy so we find our package and create a, a folder within that package called proxies and you can call that whatever the proxies, proxy, file, whatever you want to call it. And then create a new class and call this common proxy, capital C and capital P. Finish. And now, basically, more or less, we keep this empty. We don't do any imports, any extensions, nothing like that. Basically, this wall can hold methods such as like add names, add recipe, blah, blah, But it's not a method from other files. It's our own created methods. And what we put inside those methods is either we register all the game registry dot register blocks or blah blah so if you want to register all the names in here you create a method called whatever pro probably call it something related then at do all the language registry dot add names for all your items and blocks in your main class so we could do that all in this common proxy so that they all work on the server after you've done a few things but that's, you don't necessarily have to do that you could just do it all in like you could have a method and then have like a the actual game register so like let me take an example if we had a game registry dot register block we could have a method here uh with a parameter of like par one and then in that method we put game registry dot register block where the thing in the brackets is par one and then we use a method from common proxy in our main class to register the blocks instead of using game registry so that does the exact same thing as game registry except it's doing it through the common proxy therefore allowing it to work on the server but we don't need to do that for get the registering blocks because the game registry dot register blocks method already works on servers anyway so it's yeah it's a little confusing but proxies are but one, one one method we put in here that generally we should have in our proxy anyway is public let's get the format in right public void and then it's add renderers and you put two normal brackets and then two curly brackets uh yep what even though we have methods here we don't actually put code in here we never register any renderers or any entity ids here we never do that in the common proxy we do that in the client proxy and i'll show you that now so now we're going to create a client side proxy which is a proxy which in which we do all the stuff so like this add renders thing we won't put anything in the com proxy but in the client proxy we'd put stuff like add this armor map or add this entity map or something so we create a new class inside that proxies package and call this client proxy and now what's different about this compared to common proxy is that this extends common proxy so I'll explain that in a second but what we do is extend common proxy and then we have the method from common proxy here so public void low public void add renderers even but then what we do is just before the public void add renderers we put add override with a capital O now basically what this does is here we put all that stuff like rendering and code and stuff um, if we have other methods we have to put at override before it and why we have at override is so that whatever code we put in here will override whatever's in common proxy now that we extend it so why we need that is if the game looks at this it's going to see our code here and be like oh it's got all this code but then obviously it extends common proxy so it goes to that base class common proxy and it says oh there's nothing there so we'll take the base class's details which isn't having nothing there with at override that will take everything from here 
then it will come to common proxy and you'll say oh there's nothing there but then it will remember that we overrided that and it would add all the stuff from client proxy into the common proxy so whatever happens in the client automatically gets applied to the server and so that's how the proxies work an important rule to follow is in the client and common proxy whatever method you put in so if you create your own methods or if you use pre-done methods whatever method you use always have the same methods here in here except in the client before each method put at override so what that does it allows each method to be present in both the client and server and then all the code from the client can be applied to the server so yeah the proxy ID is quite a conf confusing thing but basically all you need to remember is that the client does all the code all the rendering all the graphics the server's just there but make sure all the methods here in the client are present in the server but with uh, I'll write before each method in the client so that it could be applied to both the client and the server so now that we have our proxies we need some way to connect this to our mod so we do that through the base class with a annotation and something else that we do and I'll explain that why I'll explain what we do and why uh, but before we do this we need to import some things into our base class in order for these things to be initiated in our base class and be connected to only this mod and what we do is we, the Im first import is import uh, our proxy so wherever our proxies are so for me both proxies are in the same location so I can just import mcmg5 dot proxies and then if you put dot star and semicolon it imports everything from that uh, package which is client proxy and common proxy but then the second thing we need is import and then it's cpw.mods.fml.common so like these four up here but after common we put dot sided proxy and this is not useful an annotation called at sided proxy which allows us to initiate or even con initiate and com uh, connect these proxies to our mod so the things we're going to do is connect our proxies to our base mod with that annotation I was on about so what we, where we put this annotation is in, in the main but in the body of the code um, we put that here and we put at sided proxy with capital S and sided capital B and proxy and two brackets and like these annotations up here no semicolon at the end now the two things we put in sided proxy are as follows the first is client side equals and then put speech marks then put a comma after the speech box and put server side and then the same thing equals and speech marks but no comma after this one and what we need to put in here is the location of our class which is our client side proxy which is client proxy and our server side proxy which is common proxy so our client side proxy is in the package mcmg5 so we put that in speech marks dot proxies dot and then the name of it so we've called it client proxy and the same for the server side the location is in which is mcmg5 dot proxies dot and then the name of the class which is common proxy so this is just saying that our client proxy is this one and our server proxy is this one. And now the next thing or even the last thing we need to put here is just below the annotation and we put public static common proxy and then give it a value uh, variable name so we can just call it proxy and semicolon at the end. Now what this does it basically instantiates our common proxy which we had here which is our server side proxy remember and you're probably wondering why we've done that well basically what we use when we want to use our like let's say we had a client proxy method called add name with the parameter par1 and the thing inside the method was language registry dot add name brackets uh, uh, our I object our item we want to add the name to comma and then we put instead of the speech marks we put par1 and then we use uh, our common proxy method of adding a name instead of the language registry method of adding a name in order to add our inventory name through the proxy but then remember we put that same method in the common proxy without anything inside it we put the parameters in us so we still put the int par1 in the parameters but inside it we don't put anything we just leave it blank or if we need to put something return something null like zero uh, and why we do that and then yes we do that and then we have it instantiated so when we use that we could put here in the in it proxy dot add name obviously it's not going to work because I haven't got it but then we put proxy dot add name brackets and then obviously the parameters and int of par1 or whatever ints we add so obviously we needed the object and then the name and speech marks but then what that does is it basically goes to the common proxy and it says oh it's there so we'll just run that through here the server side's got the inventory name added but it looks at the client proxy and it's like oh it's here and this is what it wants us to do it wants us to add the name to language registry 
So why we do it for the common proxy or the client proxy is so that we can apply it to the server, but then this is automatically applied to the client anyway because it extends the server. So pretty complicated stuff, but that's why we instantiate it. So yeah, I've said this many times, this is really complicated stuff, uh, makes your head explode, but what I want to say now, I know you might have wasted your time now, but I haven't explained why, but what I want to say now is most of the time we won't even use these proxies. These are just here for allowing, if we have any errors, allow us to run it through these uh, server and client proxies to allow us to work. So for stuff like adding recipes, adding names, adding or registering blocks, stuff like that, registering entity IDs, all that stuff, we could per easily do it through here and the mod will work perfectly fine. We don't need any proxies or anything. But why we need proxies is that if we need to do anything on the server and we need to work on the server, we'd want to run it through our client proxy and our common proxy to sort of sync it together instead of only having it on the base class which would be installed on the local side and the server side but it won't have any way of connecting it. But this proxy will allow us to connect stuff so stuff like um let's think about it. Um adding armors we need to add ar we could add armors through here, but it'd be so much easier to do it for the proxy so that we know the armors would render correctly on different computers, etc. But yeah, complicated stuff and I'd just say have this here any handy but we probably won't use it most of the time yeah so thanks for watching this um hopefully future tutorials i don't think any nearby future tutorials use the proxies but complicated mods will probably need these proxies to order stuff as well as making stuff work on servers correctly but yeah thanks for watching hopefully see you guys next video